So the first thing I'm going to put into the scene in order to render it is some kind of light. And I'm going to hit, go up one level to the object level here. And what I like to add is an environment light. And what that allows me to do is load up an HDR map. So with the environment map, I'm just going to choose an HDR that I have. So load that up here. And when I move around in the viewport, I can see this is my HDR as a backdrop. And my image is kind of lying flat into the scene. So let's take care of my polygonized image being in the right position. Just going to add a transform node. And rotate it on his x axis. Yeah. Super. Next thing um, I'd like to do is add kind of a wall where it's hanging on. So just going to create another geo here. And within that, I'm going to drop down another grid. Make this a bit bigger, say 40 by 40. Give it some color, in our case, maybe white. And transform it again. Or no, we, we don't need to transform it. I think, yeah, let's just set it to XY plane here. And move it back a little. Say minus one. Go back into OBJ. Yeah. Something like that. We can also translate it in here, the whole geometry, and um, just use those handles here from the nomon to just pull in the geo a bit closer. So something like that. It still looks kind of dark to me, so let's go back into the environment light and increase the light intensity, say, to three. Also, for rendering, what I'd like to do is render the light geometry, so that provides us with a correct backdrop which in this case, as the backdrop is the wall, might not have been necessary, but I just like to see my HDR in my rendering. What I need next in order to render it are some materials. So we generated the color values already. However, um, not all material attributes um, in here. So it's gonna go into the shop context and the shop stands for shading operators. So when you click here, go to shop operators, again, hit tab, and I'm going to drop down a mantra surface here. Actually, I need two, one for the backdrop, one for the image. Just like that. And they come with some predefined channels. So what they offer is a base color. And as we already um, defined a diffuse color in here, this gets added to our base color. Um, I've got a reflection model here, so it can adjust intensi the intensity of the reflections and also the roughness of the reflections. Um, they already come with an IOR value predefined, which resides here in settings. So this is my IOR, and I want to set it to, let's say, a bit higher, so four or five, something like that. And um, so that's the basic adjustment um, I have to make for my materials at that step. And what I need to do now is specify which geometry should use which material. So I'm going to go back to my objects here and just select the node with my image first and go to the materials tab and just with that icon I can pick one of the materials that I just defined. Let's give it the first one and do the same thing for my backdrop. Give it the other one. And the final thing I need to add now for rendering is a, a render node, so a node that defines how to render that stuff. That's going to happen in the output context. Tab again, and what I want to drop down is a mantra node. Mantra is the native rendering engine of Houdini. And what I want to set up here is within the rendering tab, I want to set it to a physically based rendering. So that ensures my environment light, my shadows, the bounces and everything is um, calculated on a physically based algorithm. So that's pretty similar to what all the other path traces like Octane or Indigo or Arnold do. So in order to see what we're actually rendering, let's go to the render view and hit render. 
what you see here is a previous rendering, yeah, and it restarts its rendering process. And what you see here are several problems. So that doesn't look like our image at all. So let's get back to the materials and tweak them. Go in the shop network and let's tweak the background surface first. So for the reflection, I don't want the reflection intensity to be that that strong. So let's just dial it down. Maybe just something like 0.1. And give it a bit of roughness, a bit more roughness. So let's say something like 0.8 to make it appear rather diffuse. Also, I want to dive in my diffuse channel and give it a stronger base color so it becomes brighter. Something like that. I'm gonna do a similar thing with the shader for our image. Just gonna go in there, increase the diffuse base color so the color values that we defined come through a bit stronger, which they do here. Also, before tweaking the reflections, one thing that occurs to me is this plane looks flat, although we extruded it. And I have an idea why that comes from. So let's stop the rendering here and go back into our object layer, see you, and go into the image geometry. The thing that I suspect to cause this flat appearance of the image is my angles in here are, my angles between the polygons in here are pretty low. So what I think it does is um, interpolate the normals across here. So what we actually need to do is break the normals along the edges. And we're gonna do that with a facet salt. Yeah, within the facet salt, we check cusp polygons and give it a really slow cusp angle of say five. Pipe it up here wire it up, and go back into the render view and see if that fixed it. Nah, not really. Let's extrude it a bit stronger. Re-render again. Nah, I think I need to have a look at this. So give me a second here. Okay, so what fixed it was one thing I forgot. My primitives at the moment, they don't have normals when they come out here. So for shading purposes, it just assumes some direction that this polygon is facing, which is straight towards camera. And uh, in that case, definitely isn't the case. So it's easily fixable by just adding a normal sub below our facet sub and tell it to add normals to the primitives. What that does is gives us a more correct render. So what I'd like to do now is go back into the shop network, into the mantra surface for my image and decrease the reflection intensity and maybe add a bit of roughness. What I'd like now is to intensify the color that comes from the image a bit. And I need to do that in my object again. In my, whoop trip from map node that gives me those color values and within the tabs color settings it already gives me some basic adjustment possibilities so say we increase the color scale my diffuse colors get a bit stronger now one thing I like about this render view is uh, with the left click you can tell it where to converge so you can actually paint kind of paint samples into your rendering Maybe increase it a bit more. With shift and left click, you can define a render region. And if you don't want that convergence to happen first on the point that you specified, you just left click outside of the image. Okay, maybe I wanna rotate my light a bit. So I'm gonna go into the environment light again. And in the transforms, um, I'll rotate it on the Y axis to I think 120 kind of worked. Just shift left click out outside of the image. Yeah, a bit bluish, but I think we can work with that. Maybe try a hundred. Mm, 
to red. A look in the scene view. What I also added when I'm trying to fix my rendering errors was I added a camera just by control clicking on the camera symbol. And the thing with the cameras, you can select them here. So just select this cam. And if you want the camera to move with your viewport, just make sure the lock button is uh, checked. So now that I just want to have a look at my scene without moving the camera, I'm going to uncheck that. And you can here, just kind of going to move around, just can move around the thing. This is my camera position here. And I um, can select it back and lock it to my viewport. So now I'm going to move that camera around. So I'm just going to put it back here, go into my render view and watch it converge. Another thing I'd like to do is give it some bit of an edge detail here. So just add some detail to those really wide areas here. So I'm going to go back into my geometry. And I think what I also did when trying to fix up things is, yeah, I increased the extrusion height. So yeah, I'm going to go back there, just see how that comes. That's okay. So back into the geo. What I like to do is um, bevel those edges. That's done with a poly bevel. Hook that up here. Highlight it. Gonna bevel the edges. Um, make it round a bit. Just a tiny bit. So we'll add minimal bit of detail in here. Nah, I must admit I'm not liking it that much. So instead of the poly bevel, let's go back into the scene view. Instead of the poly bevel, we'll add a poly wire. And what that will do is kind of trace those outlines. And within that poly wire, I want to decrease the radius and turn prevent joint buckling off so that doesn't give that nasty artifacts. And I want to decrease that radius maybe a bit more and merge that with the only, uh, original geo. So I have my image here and I'm going to merge that with the poly wire, which sadly hasn't the color of my image yet. However, I can transfer my colors from that image here to this poly wire with the attrib transfer sub. So geometry to transfer attributes to and geometry to transfer attributes from. And now we see it should have that color. Let's just disconnect that. Okay. Exactly. So back into the new. Yeah, that gave it some additional detail. You can go in here and increase the subdivision of the tube that it's extruding there. So now it's only like a square tube here. Set to 12, make it a bit more round. Yeah, really starting to like that one. Let that converge fully. So what I did finally is load my image up into After Effects and just applied some grading steps, just like curves, exposure, added a bit of a chromatic aberration here. And uh, that is my final image. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, first foray into Houdini and its capabilities and um, hope to see you soon on our road to proceduralism. So cheers and goodbye.